and we've got exclusive new reporting on how one big bank dodged a major bullet just hours before the hedge fund went bust. CNBC.com's Hugh Sun just broke the story on our website. Hugh, good to see you. Hi, Melissa. So it was Morgan Stanley that dodged the bullet here. How'd they do it? Yeah, I mean, look, it's been clear from the beginning uh, that Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs were uh, the quickest to act. They, they dodged the bullet. I, I think the narrative up to this point was that, you know, they had this uh, meeting between the primes and between Bill Huang, you know, the, the Archegos uh, founder, on Thursday, March 25th, to sort of declare a ceasefire. And that the very next day, Goldman Sachs was, you know, first out there selling huge, huge blocks of stock. Well, that wasn't exactly the full story, Melissa. So as we report on CNBC.com exclusively, Morgan Stanley was out March 25th, which is Thursday night, moving huge, huge uh, you know, blocks of stock, about $5 billion worth of stock in Archegos names like Baidu and Tencent Music. And it, yet they did it very quietly. They did it with a handful of less than a half a dozen uh, hedge fund counterparties. And that this was something that helped them remove the risk that they faced and they did it, you know, Thursday earlier than everybody else knew. So what's your sense as to why Credit Suisse was le left out of this party? <laughs> we were just learning today that they are going to take a $4.7 billion a loss. We know that just last night they were liquidating the rest of their exposure to Archegos. Just last night. I mean, this is weeks later. You know, it's, it's hard to explain other than an outsider like me saying that it is perhaps a sign of uh, dysfunction, of the left hand not knowing what the right hand was doing in the case of Credit Suisse, of not uh, having a culture in which um, risk management is elevated to a high enough position where they can act and act quickly and decisively. Um, you know, the way we had heard, to bring it back to the Morgan Stanley story, the way we had heard about it, essentially, you know, is that, you know, when they shifted a lot of, you know, the risk to these hedge funds, uh, you know, the hedge funds were not thrilled ultimately because, they didn't know the extent of the selling that was just about to happen the very next day, the tens of billions of dollars of share sales that were going to happen, you know, and this huge flood of sales that were going to happen the very next day. So word got out, you know, ultimately. So it seems like the U.S. banks, at least, who largely dodged this so-called bullet, does that remove the regulatory target on their backs? I mean, if, if it were Morgan Stanley yeah. taking a multi-billion dollar hit, could this be a whole different story when it comes to the banking system once again being the target of new regulations? I, mean, I, think, I, I think so, Melissa. I, I think the answer is, uh, you know, Morgan Stanley was looking at a, a hit of as much as $10 billion if they did uh, nothing and if they sort of, you know, were more of the Credit Suisse Nomura camp of, you know, sitting on their hands until the losses developed, until everybody else got out of the trades. I think what this shows is, you know, if you look at Morgan Stanley, and you could say this about Goldman Sachs as well, probably about J.P. Morgan as well, that if you have the, you know, the biggest, most robust uh, prime brokers on the street and in the world, that they have the most sophisticated risk management systems, that they are the most battle tested. They've been through this. They've obviously had management who have been through the 2008 crisis, which is only, you know, 11 years ago. And that, you know, perhaps that they are responsible actors, at least when it comes to protecting their own balance sheet against these types of blow ups. Hugh, thanks. Great reporting. Hugh Son, CNBC.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.